today uh, we will be talking about sorting algorithms in the last class uh, we have talked about searching algorithms so today we will see a number of sorting algorithms that we can use to sort the elements or arrange the elements either in descending order or ascending order okay so these are the resources you can use uh, these resources to study uh, the sorting algorithms okay so let's start so what is the objective of sorting algorithms if we look at the objective of sorting algorithms then uh, we will see that the task of sorting algorithms is to rearrange the records so that their keys are needed or their keys are ordered according to some well defined ordering rules okay so uh, when we use the sorting algorithms to uh, uh, to arrange the records either in ascending order or descending order so uh, we can uh, do that by well defined ordering rule okay so this well defined ordering rule is implemented uh, with each sorting algorithm and when we apply the sorting algorithm uh, to the uh, to a number of records for arranging either in descending order or ascending order so we can uh, uh, we can have uh, an efficient uh, uh, performance or we can see the efficient performance uh, by uh, by the algorithms by taking the less time okay so uh, so depending upon the uh, time complexity of the algorithms we can arrange the we can arrange the algorithms uh, in terms of their in input size and the uh, input size and the time okay so when we have been uh, given an array of n real numbers then uh, we can apply this ordering rule to sort the elements of uh, the array a in ascending order or descending order of their values okay so this ascending order or descending order is obtained uh, uh, obtain the elements of the array so according to the according to the uh, relative uh, relative uh, relation between uh, the adjacent elements okay so uh, we have been given a problem of uh, array of n real numbers then uh, our objective is to sort the elements of uh, array a in ascending order or descending order of their values now uh, what are the different types of sortings are available so uh, according to the uh, according to the availability of the uh, memory or uh, the elements which are to be fit into an array uh, we can divide the sorting algorithms into two different uh, groups one is the internal sorting another is called the external sorting now let us look what is internal sorting so if the file uh, is to be sorted uh, into memory or uh, equivalently if the file you will be sorted into an array then the sorting method will be called internal sorting okay so in this method uh, any record can be accessed easily okay so internal uh, in internal sorting record can be accessed easily then what is external sorting so external sorting is performed from uh, external uh, external disk or external drive okay so in this method an external sort algorithm must access records sequentially or at least in the block okay so uh, internal sorting is done uh, into memory either into memory or an array an external sorting is performed from external uh, disk or uh, we can say the tape disk okay and in external sorting the sorting algorithm uh, must access the record sequentially or at least in the block okay then uh, what will, uh, then uh, what is the uh, memory requirement of this algorithms so uh, if we consider the internal sorting algorithm or we can in other way we can say the sorting uh, sort in place algorithm then uh, in case of sort in place algorithm uh, they uh, they uh, do not need the extra memory except a small stack or table okay and sometimes the algorithm that use a linguist representation also use an extra words of memory for a uh, list of uh, list pointers or list of pointers okay 
so uh, then uh, what about the stability of the sorting algorithms so a sorting algorithm uh, will be called stable if it is preserves and uh, relative order of equal keys in the file okay that means if the uh, if the sorting algorithm uh, preserve the relative order of equal keys in the uh, file then the sorting algorithm will be called the stable sorting algorithm okay so most of the sample algorithm are stable but uh, most of well known sophisticated algorithms are not stable algorithms okay now uh, we can classify the sorting algorithms according to their time complexity now uh, if we consider the time complexity of the sorting algorithms then we can divide the sorting algorithms into two classes okay one the first uh, first type of sorting algorithms uh, will be of order of n square uh, class algorithms and the second type of algorithms will be of order of n log n class algorithms so uh, order of n square uh, class algorithms will include bubble sort insertion sort selection sort and cell sort uh, in uh, order of uh, n log n class algorithms uh, we can see the heap sort merge sort quick sorts uh, are available okay so this heap sort merge sort quick sorts uh, will be included uh, in order of n log n class algorithms so uh, if we study uh, if we study the order of n square uh, algorithms especially the sorting algorithms then uh, we can see on the same input bubble sort uh, will take uh, more time than insertion sort selection sort and cell sort okay and uh, uh, if we can uh, if we can see the selection sort then we can see the selection sort takes more time than insertion sort and cell sort but uh, if we look at the cell sort on the same input uh, in compared to uh, bubble sort insertion sort selection sort then we see that cell sort takes less memory uh, than bubble sort insertion sort and selection sort on the same input okay and if we study uh, the order of n log n class algorithms then uh, we see that heap sort takes much more uh, time than uh, merge sort and quick sort on the same input but uh, however the quick sort takes less uh, time than heap sort and merge sort on the same input so uh, if we can make this study uh, on the same size of input then uh, we will see that merge sort takes the more time uh, among the algorithms in order of n, uh, n square class and uh, on the other hand uh, if we study the n log n class algorithms then we see that quick sort takes uh, less time than heap sort and merge sort okay now uh, comparison based algorithm has an omega n log n worst case lower bound on its running time operation in sorting so uh, this is very familiar case uh, if we consider the comparison based sorting algorithms then we will see that omega n log n was case lower bound on its running time operation okay in a comparison sort uh, we use only comparisons between elements uh, to gain the information about the input sequence so what type of uh, information we want to uh, gain in the in input sequence so we are interested about the relative order of the elements in the array okay so if we consider uh, if we consider a sequence of elements a1 uh, a2 to an then uh, in this uh, input sequence so we will be interested to gain the information about the relative order between a1 and a2 between a1 and a3 between a3 and a4 so on okay so basically uh, we are trying to uh, we are trying to gain the information uh, about uh, about the relative order among the elements okay and this uh, info uh, this uh, relative order uh, the information about the relative order can be determined using the comparison uh, using the comparison based operation okay now what are the different uh, comparison based operations that we can uh, that we can perform on the sequence of uh, sequence of elements so uh, if uh, two elements ai and aj are given then we can perform one of the test test like ai less than aj 
AI less than equals to AJ or AI equals to AJ or AI greater than equals to AJ to determine their relative order. Okay. Now, uh, given all of the input elements distinct, that means if the all the elements are found to be distinct, then uh, competitions of the form AI equals to AJ are useless. Okay. That means AI, AJ, uh, AJ, and this uh, AI equals to AJ, those, this relation becomes useless. So, because uh, all the elements are found to be distinct in the input sequence, so therefore, uh, so no comparison, uh, no comparison on AI equals to AJ are used. Okay. Now uh, we can use uh, we can use the comparison AI less than equals to AJ, AI greater than equals to AJ, or AI less than AJ. So all are equivalent. So any one comparison. Uh, we can use to have the relative uh, information about the elements in the input sequence. Okay. Now we will be talking about the bubble search. So first uh, sorting algorithm that uh, we are going to uh, going to talk is bubble sort. Now what is bubble sort? So bubble sort is an elementary sorting algorithm. So how it works? It works by repeatedly exchanging the adjacent elements okay so when no exchanges are required the file is found to be sorted okay so before we uh, going into the details of uh, bubble sort implementation and uh, the sequential bubble sort let us look at the bubble sort uh, bubble sort uh, example so which is performed by the uh, hungarian folk dance so here you can see that hungarian folk dance which far from the bubble sort algorithm or bubble sort uh, operation.
hope you understood uh, the underlying uh, idea of bubble sort uh, so uh, now uh, we will look into the uh, implementation of bubble sort uh, where we can see that uh, in the implementation of bubble sort uh, two for loops are used okay so in the first for loop is used to uh, uh, get the uh, get the array size okay at the first position that means here uh, we will uh, we will uh, we will go from the uh, we will go from the n minus 1 uh, to uh, n minus 1 to uh, 0 that means here i will start from array size minus 1 and uh, uh, unless i is found to be greater than equals to uh, 0 we will continue this loop okay and the second for loop is used to uh, Uh, second for loop is used to uh, get the elements adjacent elements to be compared with the uh, compared with the uh, other elements okay so here uh, we keep the checking uh, where uh, uh, we say that uh, j minus 1 if j minus 1 is found to be j okay so j minus 1 uh, j minus 1 uh, represent the yeah j minus 1 represent the uh so n minus 2 element basically and j is the so here uh, j is the uh, j is the uh, any one element of the adjacent uh, elements okay so here uh, whenever the numbers j minus 1 is found to be numbers j here numbers is the array okay so array size is uh, so here array size is represented by array underscore size okay so in the first for loop we start from array size minus 1 that is n minus 1 okay and we will continue this loop until unless we found i greater than equals to 0 okay and that means we go to the down uh, we go to the uh, we uh, we go to the down sword okay so and the second for loop uh, we can see that j is uh, j starts from 1 and until and unless j is found to be less than equals to i we will continue this second for loop okay then we keep a checking uh, if uh, numbers j minus 1 uh, is found to be numbers j or not if it is true then uh, we will assign the numbers j minus 1 to them okay and then uh, basically we try to exchange the exchange the uh, elements of uh, numbers j minus 1 and numbers j that means the exchange is uh, exchange is performed between these two adjacent elements j minus 1 and j okay so uh, if the checking is found to be true then we assign the numbers j minus 1 to them okay and then we assign numbers j to numbers j minus 1 and uh, finally we have the uh, we have the element uh, at j position into uh, the temporary variable okay so uh, this is the implementation of bubble sort so we can have the different way to uh, write this program or write this function definition so we can also start from the left hand side so here we have started from the right hand side okay so in the first for loop here you can see that we start basically we have started from the right hand side we can also start from the left hand side okay so uh, we need to just compare uh, the adjacent elements so every time we need to compare the adjacent elements so uh, during competition if we uh, if we see that the first element of the adjacent elements is found to be greater than the second element in the sequence then the second element will uh, be placed at the position of the first element and the uh, at the position of the second element the second element uh, the first element will go okay so uh, this is done uh, between the adjacent elements and uh, we will continue this uh, we will continue this process uh, we will continue this process uh, until unless we uh, we meet the uh, last element okay so uh, we uh, basically we divide the divide this uh, uh, sorting process into a number of uh, number of passes okay so here we will see the number of passes that to be uh, implemented during uh, that to be implemented during uh, sorting okay so uh, 
initially uh, we have six elements one six five nine four eight okay so now uh, we will execute the first first so uh, we will consider the adjacent elements so we are one six are the adjacent elements okay so uh, when we compare uh, the one and six then uh, we see that one is found to be at uh, at the right position or correct position and six is also found to be the correct position so therefore no swap will be happened or no swap will be performed and uh, then uh, we will consider six and five so here we can see that six is found to be greater than five okay so therefore there will be a swap and after swapping the five will take the sixth position that means uh, the uh, position of the uh, position of the element six and six will take the position of the element five okay so after swapping this is done and then uh, we will consider the adjacent element six and nine so there will be no swap because six is found to be less than nine okay and then uh, we will consider the adjacent elements nine and four so there will be a swap because nine is found to be greater than four okay and uh, in the next uh, uh, in the next uh, step we will see that uh, the adjacent elements uh, that we will consider are nine and eight okay so nine here nine is found to be greater than eight therefore there will be a swap so we will perform the swap abortion or exchange the elements between nine and eight and uh, after uh, after end of the first pass uh, we can see the elements are arranged as one five six four eight nine so uh, uh, so similarly we will apply the second pass and uh, we will consider every time we will consider the adjacent elements so uh, if the uh, swap is to be performed then we will swap the then we will perform the swap operation otherwise uh, we will uh, we will not perform the swap operation okay so after the second pass uh, we can uh, see that the elements are uh, arranged as 154689 okay uh, then uh, we will apply then we will see in the uh, in the final pass that uh, the of the arranging the adjacent elements uh, then uh, we can see the elements are found to be sorted in the array okay so uh, at the end of the final pass we can see the sorted elements are arranged as 1 4 5 6 8 9 okay now uh, if we if we uh, analyze this algorithm then uh, we can see that uh, there will be a number of comparisons uh, which are to be uh, order of n square so that means uh, the number of comparisons uh, becomes 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n minus 1 okay so uh, this gives us n into n minus 1 divided by 2 and uh, here the dominating term is n square so uh, if we multiply the n with n minus 1 divided by 2 then we will see that uh, we will have n square minus n divided by 2 so n square divided by 2 n divided by 2 so here the dominating term is uh, n square so therefore based on this dominating term the time complexity will be decided okay so the number of comparisons uh, will take order of n square time so uh, this is the estimated uh, estimated uh, estimated time complexity and this uh, estimated time complexity represent the number of comparisons to be made during the sorting okay so here the graph uh, we can see the graph and this graph shows the n square nature of the vowel sum okay that means here x axis uh, represent the input size of the uh, array and y axis represent the time which is represented in uh, which is denoted in second okay so on the uh, uh, if we uh, if we gradually increase the input so here we can see that the uh, input uh, we can start from the thousand then we can gradually increase the size of the uh, input okay and when we uh, gradually increase the size of the input then we can see the time complexity will be increased that means the number of competitions will be increased and when the number of competitions will be increased uh, we can see that uh, the bubble sort will take uh, much more time uh, than the earlier size of the input 
okay so this algorithm uh, in this algorithm the number of competition is irrespective of uh, data so input uh, uh, whether and that is the input whether best or worst case okay so if the input is found to be uh, in, uh, input is found to be uh, uh, input is found to be uh, that means the small size or big size so in the best case we will have the small size input so this is the uh, irrespective of the uh, the number of competitions uh, is uh, will not depend on the uh, data size that means uh, here we can see that uh, the number of uh, if we in, uh, increase the number of uh, uh, number of elements in the array uh, then we can see that uh, the bubble sort will take a peak okay and uh, we can increase the, and here the time will be increased but uh, in case of the number of comparison operation the number of comparison operation will not depend on the data size okay so bubble sort does not equal any extra memory that is it is the in place algorithm or in place algorithm that means the this algorithm uh, this sorting is done within uh, uh, into the memory or uh, in the uh, into uh, the array okay so therefore so this bubble sort does not require extra memory and that is why the bubble sort is called the stable algorithm or uh, in place algorithm now to uh, in, in case of sequential bubble sort uh, we have seen that we need order of n squared uh, time complexity or the number of comparisons operations will be order of n squared okay now uh, if we want to uh, if we want to if we want to have uh, an efficient bubble sort algorithm then uh, we can implement the parallel bubble sort algorithm and parallel bubble sort algorithm will take order of in uh, order of uh, n time complexity that means the in in case of parallel bubble sort uh, we can have the time complexity of order of n now how to achieve this order of n so here the order of n is less than order of n square in case of sequential bubble sort uh, uh, we have seen that uh, the time complexity becomes order of n square but uh, if we study the parallel bubble sort then in case of parallel bubble sort we can have the time complexity order of n okay that means the linear time complexity so how to achieve this linear time complexity so uh, to achieve the uh, achieve uh, linear time complexity so we can uh, we can divide uh, the uh, steps into odd uh, into odd and even okay that means if we consider the steps from 0 to n minus 2 then uh, if k is found to be uh, uh, even uh, then uh, we can run a for loop uh, from 0 to n minus 1 n, n by 2 minus 1 okay and uh, where we compare the where we compare uh, two adjacent elements and uh, accordingly uh, we exchange if we uh, if, if we find the relative uh, uh, if we find the relative order uh, relative order facilitated to uh, exchange the elements okay otherwise if we uh, if k uh, k represent the uh, k represent the odd number then uh, we can run another for loop uh, which uh, which start from zero and uh, it will continue up to n by 2 minus 2 okay and uh, then we uh, then we go for the exchange of the adjacent elements so here uh, we can see an example of parallel bubble sort here we can see that uh, here we have uh, uh, eight elements from p0 to p7 okay and uh, total steps are uh, eight zero to seven that means this is represent the time and uh, initially in the step zero if it is the uh, if k is found to be odd okay uh, or even then for uh, step zero we can compare p0 p1 okay then uh, we compare p2 p3 then we compare the adjacent elements p4 p5 then we compare uh, the adjacent elements p6 p7 so here we are not comparing p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 okay so uh, in step 0 we are comparing the adjacent elements like p0 p1 okay p2 p3 so uh, in case of uh, in case of the 
odd step or even step so uh, according to the requirement according to the uh, given criteria so we can compare the adjacent elements okay here in uh, in case of step 1 we can see that p0 p1 is not compared okay here p1 p2 are compared then p3 and p4 are compared p5 and p6 are compared but here we are not comparing p0 p1 then p2 p3 p4 p5 and p6 p7 so alternatively uh, we can uh, compare uh, the adjacent elements uh, whenever uh, k is found to be either odd or even okay so accordingly uh, we will uh, we will apply the comparison operation on adjacent elements so that means here uh, odd number steps uh, odd number steps take n by 2 minus 2 processes okay and even number steps takes n by 2 minus 1 uh, processes so the, if we uh, add up these two uh, add up these two uh, two sets of state, uh, steps uh, then uh, the uh, requirement for the processor will be found to be order of n okay so uh, this uh, requirement order of n correspond to the time complexity of the parallel bubble sort algorithm Any questions from here? No, sir. The next sorting algorithm is insertion sort. So uh, let us look at some vital points about insertion sort. So uh, how this insertion sort is performed. So uh, we will be looking uh, for first few objects uh, which are found to be already sorted okay and uh, then uh, we will have an unsorted object or unsorted element that can be inserted uh, in the sorted set of a proper uh, sorted set in the proper place so uh, uh, this uh, operation is called the insertion sort now we will have a we will have a uh, sorted uh, array okay and uh, uh, we will have another unsorted array. So from unsorted array, we will take the objects or elements uh, into the sorted array. And then uh, we will uh, we will place the unsorted object or unsorted elements into the proper place in the sorted array. So this is the uh, this is all about uh, insertion sort. Now uh, an algorithm will consider uh, the elements at a uh, one at a time. Okay. So inserting each uh, in its suitable place among those already considered. So uh, insertion sort is an example of incremental algorithm. Why it is called incremental algorithm? Because it builds the sorted sequence one number at a time. Okay. So initially we can keep the sorted array empty. Okay. And uh, the entire array can be uh, considered as the unsorted elements. So that uh, unsorted elements uh, will be taken one by one into the uh, proper place in the sorted array, and then uh, we can perform the insertion operation. Uh, that is why it is uh, that is why uh, it is called the incremental algorithm because it builds the sorted sequence one number at a time. Okay. So at a time we cannot take two or three elements from the unsorted array or unsorted list. So uh, every time. Uh, we need to take only one element from the unsorted array. Then we place that element uh, in the proper place in the sorted list or sorted array. Now, how it works? Uh, if we uh, if we look at uh, the if we look at the hands of playing cards, then uh, we can start uh, with an empty uh, left hand. Okay. That is called that is that is called the sorted array, or we we will call it the sorted array, and the cards uh, face down on the table uh, is called the unsorted array. That means the cards which are found to be unsorted uh, will be placed on on a table uh, face down. Okay, and then uh, we remove one card from the unsorted array at a time from the table, and we will insert into the correct position or the proper uh, position in the left hand because 
we consider the left hand as the sorted array and the uh, and the cards which are placed face down on the table is considered unsorted array okay so initially our left hand uh, will be found to be empty so in uh, at the for, at the initial at the initial step we will uh, choose one card from the uh, table then we place it into the proper position of the correct position in the uh, left hand okay then uh, to find the correct position uh, for the card we compare it with the each of the cards already in the hand from right to left okay that means if we take the first card that means when the left hand is found to be empty then there will be no competition simply put the card uh, in the left hand okay if we uh, then we choose the second card from the unsorted table, from the table and we place this card before we place the card we need to compare with the first card that has been uh, that has been uh, placed uh, uh, in the left hand side, left hand okay so therefore uh, before we insert before we place the second card into its proper position in the left hand we need to compare uh, the key value of the second card with the key value of the card which is already found in the left hand okay so after competition we will place uh, in the right position in the uh, left hand then we will take the third card again uh, we will compare the key value of the third card with the uh, key values of the two cards which are already available in their proper position in the left hand so after competition we will uh, we will find the proper position for the third card in the left hand and accordingly we will place that card so uh, we will repeat this uh, process until unless we uh, uh, until unless uh, the list is found to be exhausted okay or the cards are, cards are found to be exhausted so the cards held in the left hand are uh, sorted and these cards are originally uh, the top cards on the pile on the table okay now uh, let us look at the insertion chart uh, with romanian folk dance so here you can here you can see the index position a0 to a9 so basically a0 uh, is taken as the sorted element in the left hand okay and from a1 to a9 from a9 a0 a9 to a1 to a9 are considered as the elements in the unsorted array or unsorted list and accordingly uh, the comparison is uh, made then uh, we place the unsorted uh, element into its proper position in the left hand Sir, we have a class. 
ओके ओके सो दैट्स ऑल फॉर टुडे सो वी विल कंटिन्यू दिस डिस्कशन इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर